Welcome to static selection number two, concurrent force, concurrent forces. Um, as you can see, I have drawn two illustrations of concurrent forces. Oh, sorry, one being concurrent, the other one being non-concurrent. In a concurrent force system, all of the forces act on one origin. So as you can see, they're all acting on this one origin. Another way, another term that you might hear is all of the forces act on one point of application. In a non-concurrent force system, you will have forces that do not act on one origin. For example, this. Another term I'm going to introduce to you is called a resultant. A resultant basically is one force, the sum of all forces. So it's one force of all the forces. So imagine, let's do an illustration. Imagine you have a, you have a water bottle. So this is the top view of a water bottle. And you're applying pressure, you're applying force of 5 newtons. And say this is the x-axis at 45 degrees. So you apply force this way, and another friend of yours applies force. So this is a water bottle. They apply force, 5 newtons, the same thing, 45 degrees of the x-axis. Well. Of these two forces, you're going to have a net or a resultant that will go something like this. So this force is called a resultant force. So it's called a resultant force. It, it's the one force of these two forces. OK, let's just do an example here. Uh, in this example, I'm going to find the resultant by using the method of components. And I'm just going to take, uh, take these these forces here but I'll change the 5 into a 10 so what I'll do is I'll write 10 oops 10 uh, 10 newtons and this is also going to be 10 newtons and it's going to be 45 degrees and this is also going to be 45 degrees and the A and B is just from uh, I guess this would be A and then this force would be B so we're asked to find the resultant. So we're asked to find uh, exactly where that resultant is. So the magnitude and the direction. So for every force that we have, we need to break it into their x's and y components. So if for this force, we need an x and we need a y. For this one as well, it's going to be going this way, an x and a y. And this is obviously x is, oh, sorry, this is a y. This is x, this is y, and this is x. And this is a coplanar plane, so it's 2D. Um, the x would be 10, and 10 comes from here, cos 45 degrees. And the reason it's cos is because, remember my last video, we talked a little bit about uh, Soka Toa? So, ka, toa. Well, in this example, we have we have the hypotenuse, which is. Well, let's make it a little simpler here. So let's draw another one. And I have this this force. I drew it right here, which is of ten. So if I was to draw, if I was to make it into a triangle, and we have this degrees, right? We have this which is 45, then I need the x value, which is from here to here. That's what I need. So I have the hypotenuse, which is this, and this is a right angle triangle, so I can apply Soka Toa to it. I need this, and I need this. So I need the x, x value, and I need the y value. Well, for the x value, I have to find what the adjacent side is of that angle right and the adjacent side is cos because I would use cos because I ha I want to find the adjacent side and I have the hypotenuse right so that's why it's 10 cos 45 which gives me 7.07 .07. and then the y component is 10 sine 45. It's 10 because, well, the hypotenuse is 10. And why is y, um, 
sine because we're trying to find the opposite. Remember, this is opposite of 45. So we're trying to find the opposite. And we have hypotenuse, which is given. So sine 45 times 10, which I have here. 10 sine 45, same thing, which is equal to. It works out actually the same thing because the sine of 45 and the cos of 45 is both both are 0 0.707. So then we found the x and y of this. Let's find the x's and y's of b. x is equal to. Remember, it's it's going to be the same thing going, but it's going to go the opposite way. The x value. So it's going to be 10 cos 45 degrees, which is equal to 7.07. .07. Y is equal to. 10 sine 45 degrees which is equal to 7.07 .07. and they're both newtons well they're all newtons actually so we found the components of both of these forces now we're we're trying to find resultant remember that so let's just draw both of these forces again whoops Let's just draw a straight uh, straight line here. So we have one force that's going this way. We have one force that's going this way. And this is also called a free body diagram. A free body diagram basically displays all the forces. So free, free body diagram. So we have one component force going this way of this and another component force going this way. We have one more component force going this that's the component force for this and we have another component force going this way. So I'm so I'm going to write it as this. The forces of the x-axis are equal to First I'll take uh, let's start from the left. I'll take 7.07 .07, and the direction is going to the left. Anything going to the left is going to be negative. Plus this one's going right and remember this one is uh, this force right here. So 7.07 .07. so all of the F x forces equal to 0. So now I'm going to do the y forces, the sum of all the y forces y force we have first this one which is 7.07 .07, and it's going up so up is a positive direction though, so that's fine and we have the second force which is 7.07 .07, and that's also going up as we as we drew it here as we do as we drew it right here so that one's also going up so it, that's, that one is also 7.07 .07. so if you add both of these forces you have 14.14 .14 newtons. So therefore, my resultant is 14.14 .14 newtons at, well, it's going straight up. Because because fx is 0, it, the x value here is 0. So it's, it's, it's actually going straight up. So that's, so therefore, it would be 14.14 newtons at 90 degrees going straight up. Okay, let's do another example. In this example, we're going to use the method of triangles to find out our resultant method of triangles. As you can see, I've drawn the two forces here. So one is 25 degrees, the other one's 45 degrees. The one that's 45 degrees is 10. The one that's 25 degrees is 5 newtons. So I've drawn them here like this. So first, I'll, I'll just, first I'll draw one going this way and I'll draw another plane here. So these could be planes and then I'll draw one going this way. This one is 25 degrees. This one is 45 degrees. Okay, From the horizontal. So then I'll just connect these two. And when I connect them, we see that we make a triangle. So I'll just connect these two and there you have it, I have a triangle. And if this is 25 degrees, well, if this angle is 25 degrees, then this angle has to be 25 degrees. 
So I'll just I'll just clean up that triangle a little bit and draw a different draw another triangle that looks similar. So like this. That. We have five here, ten here, and if you add forty five and twenty five together, you have seventy degrees here. And if you remember my previous, and and sorry, we're asked to find the resultant. The resultant is well this. It's this length from here to here. And that length represents a force. So if you remember my previous video, if you have a if you have a scenario like this, you can use cosine law to find out this force right here. So we're gonna say r square is equal to five square plus 10 square minus 2 5 10 cos of 70 degrees which is equal to 125 minus this side equals 125 minus 34 decimal 2 0 this is r square and to get rid of the r square you have to square root therefore r is equal to 9.52 newtons so we know what the magnitude is, but we still need to know what direction that is. And in, in order to find direction, we're going to use sine law. So we're going to find theta right here. So we're going to say that sine 70 degrees divided by 9.52. So we use 70 degrees here, and then the new resultant that we just found, 9.52. So this basically is 9.52 is equal to we're trying to find theta, so sine theta over, and 10 is the the side of that theta. So therefore, theta is equal to, and if you work the math out, it's equal to 80 decimal seven degrees. So this is 80 decimal seven degrees. So therefore, you can say that the resultant is equal to. 9.52 newtons at 80 decimal 7 and that would be in that direction whoops it's actually it's actually in this direction so there you have it